If you're looking forward to the RTX 50 series, this might just be either the best or the worst generation ever, depending on what card you're trying to buy. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so there's been a ton of hype around the RTX 50 series, and believe me, it's for a good reason, because yes, the leaked information about the RTX 5090 and potential Titan has definitely been very interesting and looks to be, yet again, another potentially 60 maybe even upwards of 80% performance uplift, depending on if we're talking about synthetics and on paper or real world rasterized gaming performance. Regardless, it's sounding really good. However, yet again, Nvidia seems to be doing something that could leave a lot of buyers in the dust, I guess you could say. Depends on how you look at it. Let's discuss because this could have some really huge impacts on you. Again, depending on what you're looking to buy. So let's go ahead and take a look here at this chart that I've thrown together with all the leaked information on the RTX 50 series so that I can highlight to you exactly what I'm talking about. Again, yes, the RTX 5090 or Titan is listed here and they look absolutely incredible. If you compare them to the 4090, there's a huge leap in terms of the specs and in terms of the performance as well. But when we take a look at the RTX 5080, here's where things definitely start to change. The RTX 5080 in terms of specs is actually going to be way, way behind the RTX 5090 and the RTX Titan AI. Now, this isn't too crazy considering that the RTX 4080 also had a pretty big gap between it and the RTX 4090, but in just a second here, I'll explain as to why this gap is even larger and is leading to a point where the 80 class is just no longer comparable to the 90 class whatsoever. In fact, if we just take a look at the estimated performance based on the leaked RTX 5080 specs, well, we're already talking about a GPU which actually might not even beat the RTX 4090. Yeah, that's kind of wild to hear. And not only that, but the RTX 5080 could potentially maybe even fall short of the RTX 4090 in rasterization performance. Now in ray tracing, I do suspect it will be faster, hopefully significantly faster, but we just don't know yet. That is a bit of speculation there, but Again, this gap is clearly getting a lot larger. If we take a look at the RTX 4090 versus the RTX 4080, well, according to Tech Power Up, there's roughly a 26% gap in performance between these two cards, and these two cards also have a gap of around 68% in terms of core count, and the 4090 also has 50% more memory overall with 24 gigabytes versus 16 gigabytes on the RTX 4080. Now the 5080, I do believe will be sporting 16 gigabytes of memory once again, so likely not gonna see an improvement there, whereas the RTX 5090 and the RTX Titan AI are certainly gonna be getting a pretty large improvement when it comes to the memory capacity, which is kind of strange because they almost don't really need it, whereas the RTX 5080 could potentially do with a little bit more VRAM. Now, don't get me wrong, I think 16 gigabytes is still gonna be solid, but now we're moving from 50% more memory all the way up to, well, depending on if it has 28 or 32 gigabytes, it's gonna be potentially 75% to two times the memory on the 90 class card. And in terms of the core count, we're talking two times to 2.3 times more cores, again, depending on the final specs, versus the RTX 5080. So double the core count and way more memory, potentially up to double there as well. That's a huge, huge gap between these two cards and things were not always like this. You used to be able to buy an 80 class card and get roughly, you know, 85, 90% of the 90 class performance. If you take a look back at cards like the 1080 Ti, certainly those were the days where you could get very close to flagship performance for far, far lower prices. Well, it looks like that's no longer gonna be the case. So if you're someone who's in the market for a 90 class card, or a Titan and price is no object to you, well then certainly you will be seeing a very, very large performance uplift. In fact, potentially one of the largest that we've seen in quite some time, maybe even greater than the 30 series to the 40 series, which is already impressive. But if you're someone who wants to buy an 80 class card, 70 class card, something like that, well, it is possible that you could be getting 
far less of a performance upgrade. Now, to be fair, if the price is right, this could still be a pretty good upgrade for 80 class buyers. For example, if you bought an RTX 4080 Super, well, even though that's a lot better than the 4080 already, well, you'd still be getting potentially up to 19% more performance at a 10% lower price if Nvidia does target 899, as I believe they probably will with the RTX 5080. And overall, that's actually a pretty decent improvement to price to performance and is actually very good compared to the original, more expensive 4080 non-super. But if you were wanting a very large performance upgrade, it looks like Nvidia is probably gonna be trying to upsell you on the RTX 5090 and you might be wondering okay well sure but how much is that going to cost i actually believe it's going to cost a minimum of 1600 dollars and could potentially go up to 1800 dollars for the rtx 5090 as the cost of that much larger memory bus is certainly going to lead to a higher cost gpu nvidia is not going to give you that for free they want to make the same or better margins especially when they don't have competition until rdna 5 arrives potentially by the end of next year that gives them a long time to potentially overcharge for the 5090. Now, of course, I do believe eventually they'll bring out a 5080 Ti, which will be 90, 95% of an RTX 5090 for a vastly lower price. But until that happens, which by the way, that's probably not going to happen unless Nvidia's hand is forced by AMD with RDNA 5. Well then, yeah, you're going to be stuck with having to make the choice between, yeah, maybe I don't get a big performance uplift, but I get it at a lower cost. Or do I get the big performance uplift at a far greater cost? Because again, remember guys, Last time around, roughly a 26% gap between the 4080 and the 4090. This time around, if we account for the larger increase in cores going from the 5080 to the rumored 5090, we're probably talking about a 50% performance gap between these two cards. That's enormous, and NVIDIA will charge for it probably double the price of the RTX 5080. So, there you have it guys. Yes, the 50 series is looking very interesting and I think the 60 class could be a really big performance uplift as well as the Titan and RTX 5090. But for those of you looking for an 80 class upgrade, well, you might just wanna wait until the 5080 Ti or RDNA 5 if you wanna get the best bang for your buck. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.